Hello everyone, this is a follow-up to the video by the math guy on the Monty Hall paradox. Um, I just like to call it the Monty Hall problem, but I put a little plus plus here because I have a little more to say about it. Um, this is also one of my favorite problems, so uh, yeah, you stole this one off me. I was planning on doing a video about this one too, but that's great. I mean, you did a good job. Um, Okay, so I'm, I'm going to restate uh, the Monty Hall problem. You know, I have some more to add to this problem, so um, I'm going to restate the uh, Monty Hall problem here. Uh, Monty Hall was the host of a show called Let's Make a Deal. And at Let's Make a Deal, we had these contestants, and he would uh, ask them to guess on all sorts of bizarre scenarios. And For some reason, everybody had to dress up in strange costumes, and it was all very uh, amusing. Um, so, and of course, one of the, the games that were, was in the show was there were these three doors, and behind one of them was a prize. The other two were usually joke prizes, like a year's supply of toilet paper or a donkey or something like that. And uh, the real prize would be like a trip to somewhere or a new car or something. Okay, so you were to choose one of the three... The contestant was to choose one of the three doors, and in the statement of the problem what would happen is Monty Hall would then have to reveal one of the remaining doors, like let's say you had chosen this door, then Monty Hall would then have to um, uh, reveal this door to have nothing behind it, and then he would offer you the opportunity to switch your choice. And in this case it looks like you'd have to switch your choice to get the, uh, the star, and you, wouldn't, you, you can't switch to the empty door. Okay. So, um, uh, the math guy uh, gave a good verbal explanation, but uh, I don't know if you were around when uh, this caused uh, a massive flame war on Usenet. Um, everybody understood the problem. Anyone who went through the math or read through uh, Marilyn Volsavant's explanation knew the solution, yet the flame war never died down or didn't. See, or like it took that, that was a very long flame war. Um, people are not easily convinced by verbal explanations or even um, actually showing people the math. Um, so what I recommend in order to convince people about this problem, uh, so the, the problem is really uh, should you switch or not? Should you switch or should you stick with your original choice? And the, the problem is that intuitively everybody looks at the, the final two-door choice and say, oh, it's 50-50. And they just can't seem to break uh, the uh, logical problem there that, no, 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 it's not 50-50. Your original choice is always one-third. And it is a binary choice, therefore the other choice is two-thirds, actually. Um, so, but I, I don't want to bother with that kind of uh, explanation. All right. Instead, why not just simply do it by brute force. It turns out it's not that uh, it's not that uh, hard to do it by brute force. So we're going to imagine that the contestant always chooses the leftmost door, and uh, he has two possible strategies: switch or no switch. And so each what what this shows is each um, row here is one of three possible scenarios, so each one has a, a one-third chance uh, of happening, because the star could be, basically the, the prize is behind one of the three doors, so these are, that represents the three scenarios uh, of what, for, with respect to the where the prize is, and um, the, this table, we're about to fill in a six-entry table here, in which we have the two strategies of either switching or not switching. So we see in this case, if you had if if you had picked the leftmost door and the prize was behind the leftmost door, then any switch you do is going to make you lose. However, however, if you don't switch, you will win. Okay, that's nice. Now, in the second scenario, if um, what will happen is if you pick this door, Monty Hall will be forced to reveal that door, and if you switch, um, that means you're switching to the to this one because you can't pick the, the door that Monty Hall opened, you'll win. So that means if you don't switch, well, you, you're sticking with your original choice, which was a miss. And again, if uh, we 
our, this is our original choice. Monty Hall is forced to open this door, so a switch will take you to that door, which is the prize. Win. And if you stick with your original choice, you just lose. Okay. And the, the weights on these are each one-third, so we can sum up the outcomes here when we say one-third loss, one-third win, one-third win. So that's two-thirds win. But that's for the switching strategy. If you don't switch, we see one-third win, one-third loss, one-third loss. So that's just one-third win. So we can see that the switching strategy is just better. Okay? So um, the point is this, is this was brute force, and it assumes that, of course, you, you, you've picked the leftmost door. Uh, we can sort of say that without loss of generality because it's all just symmetrical. But if you really want to, you can go ahead and do the work if you want. Assuming you pick the second door, you'll just find that the win-loss is shuffle a bit, but it, otherwise the columns are the same. Um, the sum is the same. And the same thing if you choose the last door. And you could say that each of the three uh, choices you have uh, are, let's say, well, equally likely, or you, you can pick the best one or whatever. It doesn't matter. They're all going to be the same, so it, 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 it makes no difference. So whatever. The, the best strategy is to switch, and that has a two-thirds chance of winning. Hey, that looks pretty good to us. Okay. Now, the, the math guy mentioned the fact that uh, a bunch of PhDs got this wrong. Um, and I, and, and I got to tell you, the only thing worse than uh, PhD, having a PhD giving a deceptive sense of authority is touting an IQ of 215 to give you a sense of authority. Which uh, Marilyn Volsimon likes or has done, or in her books, anyways, it's been suggested. Um, here's the thing: this problem is basically never perfectly or correctly stated. Um, you stated in your statement of the problem that Monty Hall doesn't give away any body language or that it can't be read, but he is able to communicate with the um, contestant. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is propose a sub-scenario uh, of the given scenario in which, in fact, uh, an alternate strategy can do just as well, um, other than just always switching. And uh, this is a strategy in which Monty Hall and the contestant are colluding, or that Monty Hall becomes unusually predictable. And in fact, this is what we're going to do. Monty, wh what we're going to do is that have the contestant always pick the leftmost most door, and Monty Hall is always going to open the leftmost door that he can open. So, in this case, there are two empty doors, so he always opens this one. In this case, the only door he can open is this one. And in this case, the only door he can open is this one. Okay? So, now, the, what the contestant does is he decides he's only going to switch if the rightmost door is open. That is to say, he'll only switch in this, this scenario. So he stays and stays here. So with this alternate strategy, knowing that you know, Monty Hall, for some reason, Monty Hall either colludes with the client, with the, uh, sorry, the uh, contestant to do this, or for some reason he, he, he's just deterministic and always seems to do this. So the one way or another, the contestant knows that Monty Hall is always, for some reason, trying to choose the leftmost door. Okay? And if we work this out, you know, relative to the uh, contestant strategy, you'll see staying here produces a win. Switching here, again, this door is open, will produce a win. And the stay here produces a loss. Okay, so what, what does this work out to be? Again, one-third chance of, e of each scenario. So it's one-third win plus one-third win plus one-third loss. That's two-thirds win. That's interesting. So this is clearly a different strategy in which sometimes the, the contestant is staying and sometimes he's switching, and yet he's achieving the same outcome. And he's doing so because Monty Hall is presenting this deterministic way. You know, and it turns out, you know, this this affliction or this kind of uh, weakness of Monty Hall, in that he's sort of 
always choosing the leftmost door or whatever, um, only affects this scenario in which you've uh, correctly chosen, right? In other words, in this scenario, in this scenario, Monty Hall really was, was, didn't have much choice in which door, door he had to open anyways. Right, so um, the point is just you know if the if the problem is originally stated, it just says is it better to stay or is it better to switch. Um, the the question is not easily answered unless you know that Monty Hall is not giving away information. In other words, the most correct statement of the problem has to include some proviso that says Monty Hall, if given a choice between opening two two doors we'll choose between them randomly, right? That's one way of fixing the problem. The other way of fixing the problem is to simply ask, what is the highest probability of any given strategy that could be achieved? Because I believe two-thirds is just the maximum. You know, this collusion is uh, the best you can do, right? Um, or Monty Hall could just tell you, but under the assumption that, that Monty Hall doesn't, isn't able to just blatantly cheat like that. So we see we see that you know it, it you have to be very careful about how the problem is stated, right? So, uh, you, you, if you want to include this really really weird anomalous case, okay. Finally, there's um, one other strategy, which uh, or one other consideration, which is uh, the real world consideration. See, in the game show itself, uh, the people who are funding the, the show, you, you might imagine, uh, might have the following considerations. They might say, well, we want to pay out the prizes as uh, infrequently as possible because the prizes cost a lot of money, like cars or whatever. Uh, it's $20,000 or 30000 or whatever. You have to... You know, I have to be careful with that kind of uh, payouts or a vacation or whatever. Um, but they want to keep the game show interesting as possible. They know that if it's just one in three chance, people will get bored of that. So what they what they say uh, what they want to do is devise a strategy in which they minimize the the amount of payout, but they want to maximize uh, the amount of excitement in the game. So. This is this is a, this is what they want is they want Monty Hall to sometimes offer the contestant the opportunity of switching, and sometimes he just leaves the customer stuck with his original choice. Okay, so for example, if uh, Monty Hall were always to stick the the, the contestant with his uh, original choice, then you know the game would be boring, but uh, the customer would have a one third chance of winning, which is um, less than the two-thirds chances of that we were getting with these other scenarios, right? So, um, the question is, can, uh, can uh, Monty Hall then at least uh, offer the opportunity to switch at least some percentage of the time? And the answer is yes, and this is, this is what, so this is the strategy Monty Hall is going to, uh, going to perform. Basically, we're going to break it into two cases. Monty Hall, remember, knows where the prize is from, from the very start. Um, if the contestant correctly picks the door, then Monty Hall will always give the contestant the opportunity to switch to one of the two empty doors. If the, the, customer, the contestant has chosen a wrong door, then what, he, what Monty Hall decides to do is mentally he flips a coin. And if it lands heads, he just sticks the customer with a with a losing door, or the con contestant with a losing door. So 50% of the time he just loses, and the other 50% of the time he goes ahead and offers the uh, the contestant the opportunity to switch anyways. Okay, so that's interesting. 
So let's work out the weights here. Um, this is still one third chance, right? One third chance that the star is behind this door, right? And Monty Hall will always offer the switch in this ch in this case. Now in this case, um, this is also the one third case scenario, but we have to, we're going to modify it down to one sixth because we're going to keep going with the strategy and go ahead and add one sixth to this the stuck scenario. And again, here also in this scenario, it's a we're going to say one sixth and then add one sixth down to the the stuck scenario, and this will sum to one third, right? Which makes sense. Fifty percent, fifty percent of the of the remain so this is one third. This you could sort of see as the remaining two thirds, and doing this 50-50 split one. Around, what we're saying here is that um, so one third of the time in total, Monty, Monty, Paul's just, Hall, Paul, Monty Hall is just going to stick you with uh, whatever your first choice was, and it'll be a miss when he does that. Okay, so. Let's uh, go ahead and do the switch. Hang on, let me get a marker that's working. The switch, no switch scenario. So, if the contestant switches here, he'll lose because he had chosen the right door in the first place. And if he doesn't, he wins. Okay. Here, if he switch, well, we remember this is a win, loss, and again, this is opened, he switches to this, win, loss, and uh, in the final case, um, doesn't matter which strategy he would have chosen, doesn't, Monty Hall has decided to make him lose anyways, no matter what. Okay, so we're going to sum the, the uh, possibilities here. Um, so we have to take the weight into account, right? So this is one third chance of loss, one sixth chance of win, one sixth chance of win, one third chance of loss. So that's one sixth plus one sixth is two sixths. Win, which is equal to one third. Okay, now let's do the other sum here. So one third chance win, and that looks like loss all the way down. One third chance of winning. So we see that this is interesting because whether you the uh, co the contestant chooses switching or no switching, it, it doesn't matter. It's a one third chance of winning, and in fact, the one third chance of winning is kind of crummy because that's the same as if Monty Hall had never offered you a chance of switching in the first place. It's just one third chance. Now, notice in this scenario, one third of the time he's going to offer you to switch, and of the remaining two thirds. 50% of the t time, he's also going to offer you a switch. So that's another third. So in other words, in the whole scenario, two-thirds of the time, Monty Hall is offering you the opportunity of switching doors. And one-third of the time, he's just sticking you with your bad choice. So in other words, from the uh, corporate funders of the uh, game show's point of view, Monty Hall has successfully reduced the odds or, uh, of the paying out the prize from two thirds down to one third, thus is paying half as much for the prizes, but only reduced the excitement of the game in, in uh, offering the switch by one third. So if you um, think about just how nasty these uh, kind of corporate funders think, uh, they'll probably want to stick with this kind of strategy. Um, Anyway, so this is why uh, this problem is a little bit more interesting to me. That's why I put the little plus plus on the end here. Um, just thought I would uh, add these interesting thoughts about it. Um, anyways, that's all I had. To you later.